Have doctors in China come up with the cure for diabetes? I'm Dr. Eric Westman and welcome to my channel where I review and debunk nutritional misinformation online. In this article, we're going to read about how stem cell therapy has been used to recreate the pancreatic function. And the doctors are claiming that this reverses diabetes for the first time. Be sure to look till the end to get my final thoughts. Thanks for sending this, which turns out to be a press release, but it was based on an article that I could read. Of course, when you're consuming information, you want to be sure if it's just a press release that it's based on an article that's published, or maybe it's based on an abstract at a meeting. It's a lot harder to get information about the study at an abstract at a meeting. In fact, in the research world, it's thought of as sort of in its preliminary stage of being publicly presented if it's just at a meeting. So in this case, the researchers say they've cured diabetes for the first time. And it's based on an article in the Journal of Cell Discovery just this year. And the press, re press release basically says that the experimental treatment created an artificial version of cells found in the pancreas that produce insulin and keep the blood sugar levels in check. And so this man had had diabetes for 25 years and had lost almost all function of these cells known as islets. And this goes along with our current understanding of diabetes when you're not involving lifestyle change. So it's possible that after years and years of eating carbohydrate and making your pancreas work over time, basically making insulin, that your pancreas can run out of insulin. Of course, it's a relative running out of insulin because if you stop the carbohydrates, your body may actually revert to normal blood sugars without a pancreatic transplant. So the first thing is a debunking of this uh, press release is that you can reverse diabetes right now without a stem cell transplant. And yes, it does involve lifestyle change. So back to the article and the press release, it does say that up until this point, no one has ever cured of di diabetes. Well, it's a matter of semantics here. Yes, you can cure diabetes. What they're saying here, is doctors have figured out how to put it in remission. Well, so here the putting it in remission or curing it or the, what I do in my clinic every day in the words of this abstract and press release, this requires the patients to keep up a relatively strict diet and exercise program to stop the blood sugar problems from returning. Well, forget the exercise part, actually. It can be done simply by changing the diet. But here is kind of the classic idea of let's just give a pill and manage the diabetes or, or a shot or, or why don't we give stem cells to recreate the pancreas so that you can just eat whatever you want and then you won't have diabetes. Well, I guess that would be all well and good. So the idea here is that you are recreating or regenerating the organ, the pancreas internally by injecting cells that can actually turn into or mimic the cells of the pancreas. It's actually a pretty awesome idea when you think of it. And so stem cell therapy has given the, the hope and the promise that the cellular function, or even organ function can be replaced if you just teach these stem cells that are sort of the, 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 the basis of all these different other cells. Teach them what to do, teach them how to sense the glucose, teach them how to respond, well, that would be the islet cells. So basically you're turning these stem cells into pancreatic islet cells. You're injecting them into the body or, or transplanting them under the skin or however you do it so that the body itself will notice that the blood sugar is a certain level. The tissue that you've injected will secrete the pancreatic enzyme insulin needed to keep the blood glucose down automatically. It's a great idea. And the, of course, the first uh, debunking is that you can reverse diabetes without a stem cell transplant right now. But let's say that it, we could, that would be a great thing, I think, you know, 
There are a lot of people who can't change their lifestyle or don't have the ability to get access to the right right foods or right information. Well, there are a lot of people who are on medication still to manage diabetes. And those folks, of course, can reverse and put the diabetes into remission and cure by changing the lifestyle. But so this, well, like a drug, why don't we just inject a stem cell that replaces and replenishes the body's pancreatic function? Okay. Well, the the study itself was actually a case report of one person. So according to this study, there were studies done in animals like mice and that was started there. And so now here they put it into a 25 year history, someone who had 25 year history of type two diabetes to, to try to get the pancreatic function uh, back. And uh, apparently they did. So that the idea here is the cells started to become pancreatic cells and sensed the blood glucose and formed and secreted the insulin required to lower the blood glucose independent of what the person was eating. Now in the study, they really didn't talk about what the person was eating. And that of course would be very important to know, but assuming they're trying to fix the problem without regard to what people are putting in their mouths, this let's assume that they were still eating lots of carbohydrates. And so the case presented basically high blood glucoses and low insulin levels reversed by giving the stem cells, which turned into pancreatic cells. And so it seems just almost too good to be true. Well, we have to understand that this is just one person and this is a, a, a study in its infancy. And yet we know a lot about transplantation of cells. This goes way back. I remember in my own training being on a bone marrow transplant sort of ward. And even with any sort of transplantation, there are several serious issues that come into play. So for example, if you had a kidney transplant or a liver or heart transplant or here uh, stem cells that if they have the signature or the, the cells signature, or you would say fingerprint of, of not of yourself so that it's a foreign fingerprint, your body will want to attack these organs or the cells. And so this is actually the, the idea that your body wants to reject the tissue if it's not seen as its self. And so this is a problem with transplantation of another person's kidney into you, for example. So this is a matter of your body wants to reject the tissue that's not itself. And this actually gets into the idea of autoimmunity as well. If your body sees foreign tissue, but then mistakes your own tissue for the foreign tissue, it will start being reacting to itself. But in, in this case, with transplantation of any sort of tissue, you have to have these concerns and, and over time, the graft itself, if it has immune function in it, let's say you're transplanting the bone marrow, which has immune function, the, the graft itself can actually attack the host called graft versus host disease. So that if there's some immune function that's being transplanted, that transplantation can actually attack the host. So the, the, there's the concern with any transplantation that, that the body will reject what was transplanted and that the transplant has some immune cells that will actually start attacking the person who that was just had the organ or tissue transplanted inside. So, I mean, these are pretty serious issues that require either um, long-term medication treatment or just very careful selection of the tissue that's being transplanted. So it's not clear to me whether these cells will have the, the host signature or the, the signature of someone else. And that makes a big difference in terms of the um, immunosuppression needed. And immunosuppression usually is a strong medication like prednisone or other anti-inflammatory, anti-immune medication that has its own side effects in the long run. 
So relatively speaking, why not just cut the carbs and see if you can turn, you know, turn around the diabetes, reverse it, put it into cure. Remission of diabetes is one year of no evidence of diabetes, normal blood sugars. I see that routinely. Cure of diabetes is defined as five years of no evidence of diabetes, and I see that as well. So these are standard definitions used for, for cancers and for diabetes. And so this isn't the first time that diabetes has been cured. Although if you're imagining that you're replacing the pancreas, maybe this is one of the first times that you've been able to replace the pancreas and have the person eat and drink whatever they want and still get the pancreatic response to keep the blood sugar down. It's simpler to me to just teach people how not to raise the blood glucose as much, not raise that sugar. So basically avoiding the carbohydrates, the sugars and starches in the diet is a very effective way as well. So it's kind of exciting. It's kind of, it's a high tech way to perhaps reverse not only diabetes, but other issues. And, and I'm very hopeful that this information will be helpful right now, though. You don't have to wait for this. This is in its infancy. You can actually take action with your lifestyle change to reverse diabetes. I hope that's helpful. Please like subscribe and ring the notification bell. I'm putting out new material on Wednesdays and Fridays. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and check out adapterlifeacademy.com.